Money is governed by laws and rules. You probably heard it before, but money is a game, and those who know its rules will always have it in abundance. Today, I want to share with you six rules of money that changed my life. Before we continue, I just want to point out that none of these rules are my own. I've either read them from books or other forms of media from highly successful people, and I've been following these rules ever since. To quote Isaac Newton, if I have seen further than others, it's by standing upon the shoulders of giants. Please subscribe and hit the bell notification for more videos like this on a regular basis. Our first rule is probably the most important. Money is neither good or evil. How many times have you heard money is bad? That simply just isn't the truth. Money isn't good either. Money is whatever you make it to be. If you're a good person, then you will use that money for good things. If you're a bad person, then you will use that money for bad things. Don't ever think that money is entirely bad because of what someone may have said or what you may have seen in a movie at one point. There's a famous quote and it's one of my favorites in regards to money. Money makes you more of who you already are. If you want to become financially successful, then you need to eliminate the negative viewpoint you may have towards money. A lot of people have a scarcity mindset. If John gets more money, then that leaves less money for me. If Kate is more successful, then I'll automatically be unsuccessful. A lot of people have this win-lose mindset, where if one person wins, then another has to lose. When it comes to making massive wealth, you need to think in abundance. There's plenty to go around for everyone. It's not money that's in shortage. It's your mindset that's the problem. When you view money from an abundance perspective, you will have no shortage of it. Many people also like to cling on to their money, but not for reasons of saving to invest or saving for an emergency, but they cling on to it because they honestly believe they'll never make more than what they already have. And in some cases, that may be very true, but in many others, it's not. I would like to present a quote from best-selling author Stephen Covey. Most people are deeply scripted in what I call the scarcity mentality. They see life as having only so much, as though there were only one pie out there. And if someone were to get a big piece of that pie, that would mean less for everyone else. When you're looking at it from a scarcity standpoint, you focus on a problem that doesn't exist rather than focusing on solutions that may help you reach your goal. What would happen if you start to ignore your partner in a relationship? Or if you went out on a date and just sat there staring at your phone while she's waiting for you to say something? She may be waiting now, but she won't be for too long. Money is the same way. If you keep your money in a checking account too long, it will get bored and it'll go to someone else. It sounds funny, but it's true. Instead, keep your money moving. What does that even mean, you may ask? It means try to keep investing your money and keep it working for you to help you make even more money. It's okay to have money set aside as an emergency fund or a retirement fund. Matter of fact, you should, and you should have that money in a high yield savings account, but that's the only exception. I know some people who brag about how much money they have in the bank, but that doesn't mean anything if it's just sitting there and rotting. What's more impressive is if you take that capital and multiply it. To quote one of my favorite authors and entrepreneur, Grant Cardone, money is like paper. It's only good when it's used. Don't let your money get bored. Make calculated moves and get your money to work. How many times have you heard someone say, gosh, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work a day in my life again. Well, I suppose that's why you don't have a million dollars. Now, is it possible to make a million dollars and never work again? Absolutely. Is it probable? Probably not. And here's why. If you're self-made and worked from scratch to get a million dollars, it would probably be very difficult for you to just quit and do nothing. Because by now, you probably understand that it's not about reaching the mountaintop, but staying there. 
if you started from the bottom and worked really hard to make your first million, then it's very likely that you rewired your brain. You would have had to change your bad habits and adopt new and positive ones to get to where you are. You probably understand the value of giving just as much as receiving. Once you make that shift in life, it's really difficult to just drop whatever you did to reach that level and to spread that value to the world, which made you your millions in the first place, to just quit everything and go relax on a beach somewhere. To quote Jim Rohn, you don't get what you want, you get what you deserve. I understand many of us grew up being told that we shouldn't desire money. We were told we should be happy with what we have and if we think even a little bit about more, then it'll make us selfish. I have a friend who always tells me I work too hard, that I'm not satisfied with what I have and it's not like money is going to go with me after I die. Of course not. Nobody thinks money will go with them after they die. That's not why people earn money. I earn money because I want to support my family and help the world any way I can. I think that's a bit difficult to do without money. I'm also not saying you shouldn't be satisfied. Because satisfied is subjective. What satisfaction means to you is probably going to mean something different to someone else. Don't feel guilty about how big your financial dreams and goals are. Nobody can understand you more than you, and that's okay. If you can't handle $1,000, there's a pretty good chance you won't be able to handle $10,000. What do I mean by handle? I'm talking about making wise choices with your money. I'm talking about avoiding temporary temptations and focusing on the bigger picture in your life. It's easy to save $1,000, but it's even easier to get tempted to spend it. It can take someone years to save a good amount of money and only days to blow right through it. I sometimes like to compare money to a relationship. When you first meet a girl and you think she's the one, in order for her to be fully committed to you, you need to prove to her that you're worthy of her time. Money is the same way. In order for you to get more, you need to prove that you're worthy of the money you already have. Only then will you be able to get more and be able to keep more. How can you make good choices with money? Simple. Don't spend it on liabilities and try to buy assets. Spend your money on things that will help you make even more money. Once you learn the habit of spending wisely, you will slowly start to notice your bank account growing larger and larger. There's a lot of rules about money, but these are the rules I mainly follow. Of course, all these rules need to be backed up by action and consistency for you to see any real results. Once you apply these rules, it's only a matter of time until you achieve your financial goals.